Hello again. Hi. This is Monica. And this is Bree. And, and we are <laughs> single ladies. Married women. <laughs> Hello again. We have some guests today, and yes. it's June, and it's Pride Month, so we're going to celebrate some pride yes. today. Yes. Um, my very good friend Greg Carter is in the studio with us. Hi, Greg. Hi. Um, Greg and I are good friends, and we've worked together on... Many times. Many times, yes, and enjoy it thoroughly. I think I so. I think so. I do. <laughs> yeah. Because you're both actors. Correct. Yes. Yes. Are we? Yes. <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> so we're together. We're like, okay. Yes. And we have a call-in guest. Yes. We have the fabulous Farrah Krennic in it, the Hi. house. Well, not literally in the house, but she's on the phone, and we're so honored to have you. Uh, Farrah is a prominent actress. She's been on Orange is the New Black, Law and Order, Nurse Jackie. And not only that, she's an activist. Uh, she has stood for many causes, including bullying, and is just a wonderful woman who encourages everyone she meets. So I am very grateful to know her, and thank you for coming in, Farrah. I mean, for calling in, Farrah. <laughs> you flatter me. Thank you so much for having me as a part of your podcast. Thank you. Well, you're you're welcome, and thank you yeah. again. So we wanted to talk about uh, relationships, and as, as we usually do, uh, mostly it's between uh, single ladies, uh, married women, but this is going to be single people, married people. Um, and um, I, one thing, Farah, we started talking about right before we went on the air are differences and similarities between a uh, a same sex couple and you know a heterosexual couple uh, because as i was saying i think people are people so i i was um i'd like to take that conversation a little yeah. ways down the road and and see where we agree and where we maybe disagree on that well i mean i i think um yes you are correct you know in the end we are just people but you know, as much as open as I would like to be and as liberal as I would like to be, I can't help but state that there are differences between men and women. As much as people want to, you know, with everything being fluid, with uh, being gender neutral and so on, there is a difference between men and women. And so um, today the problem is you can be, you can have a relationship to men, to women, man and a woman, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, that's one topic. But the thing is that what ruins and the complications that couples face today is that relationships are not what they used to be. Not because of, it has nothing to do with their gender. It has to do with the fact that all the smart technology, social media, and all of the digital love, as I call it, is ruining what a relationship should be. In other words, the, you know, uh, voices are being replaced with text. Um, love letters are being replaced with very long and well put together emails. So people basically are being so desensitized to, to ha adding that personal touch in their life that we don't realize it, but uh, people have become lazy. People do have no reason to give effort because they're like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get, I don't have to respond to the text now. I'll, I'll call her when they say I'll call her later, I'll text her later. And um, slowly but surely, you're falling in love with the image of a person, not the actual person. Well, like as you catfished. being what catfished, catfish. Yeah. Do you know what catfish? Is? I don't. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be <laughs> so straight up about this. Okay. I just learned what cat. Apparently, this has been around for a long, long time. But I just learned about the definition of catfish like last year. That's when. And correct me if I'm wrong, Farah. Like you meet somebody online and you're messaging and all that good stuff, and you show up. And they're not even, they don't look like the same person. Sometimes they're not even the same person. Is and that correct? They're not even happy to see you. Mm -hmm. because they're not, uh, they don't want to I see, see you. They just love the thought of you. Okay, but what you're talking about is, as you said, true for all people, anyone who's trying to meet someone and connect. Oh, yeah. And I think, connect. Yeah, I think the connection, the, the form of connection has definitely changed. But I think uh, what Monica was alluding to is what are the differences? Like, there's got to be challenges. Uh, and God knows same-sex couples have faced uh, formidable challenges yeah. over the years. And I, I'm just thrilled that it's Pride Month, and I think it should be Pride Month every month because um, love is love to me. And I think that, you know, lover doesn't have a color. 
um, and it doesn't have a sex, and I'm just happy that people are loving. And Gay Pride, the first Gay Pride parade was 1970, and I just want to shout that out and be so excited that it's still happening and it's flourishing and it's growing. So I'm just doing it. Uh, Farah, are you single now or in a relationship? I am single. You're single. Greg? I'm in a relationship. A long-term relationship? Uh, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we've been together for four and a half years. I think oh, that's long-term. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so what are the challenges that you have faced, Greg, if you don't mind sharing? Well, there's all kinds of challenges. I don't know that it, in my opinion, you know, I can only speak for me. Um, I don't know that any of it is specific to being gay or not. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the same challenges that uh, that everybody faces. Um, you obviously go through that period of, you know, being gaga and everything's perfect and wonderful. And then as you go along, it's like, oh, so <laughs> you don't do this or you do do that. Um, and so I think it's like with most relationships, there's an awful lot of compromise that's involved. Right. Um, what I have found in my current relationship is and why I think it's is going to be long lasting is my interest in wanting to compromise right. uh, is different um, than any past relationships I've had. Um, I don't always agree. It's not always easy, but there's always um, something in me that's like, okay, we can work this out. We'll figure this out. Right. Um, but in terms of, you know, what our challenges are, I think our challenges are based on, you know, uh, our personalities. You know, my stubbornness, um, his inability to uh, be flexible at times, mm -hmm. things that we disagree on. But I don't know that um, anything is specifically because we're two gay men. I think he and I specifically try to not get mired down in a lot of those gay men stereotypes. Right. Um, because it's something that we're not interested in and I don't think is genuine and real to both of us. Now that's amazing, but now this is modern day. Now, if mm -hmm. we were talking 20 years ago, oh, I mean, there are some real hurdles that have been jumped. So <laughs> I, if you could address that for a minute, because there's still hurdles, but... Well, I think that's, you know, what what's interesting to me is how many... Um, people who are gay are in relationships now. And when you grow up uh, being of a certain age and you're not, you know, socialized that this is okay and you can do that, how do you find your way um, right. to do it the right way? You know, if, mm -hmm. you ha if you've not had a model to show you this is how two gay men or two gay women can be in a successful relationship, then you have to kind of do that research for yourself. So yeah, 20 years ago, uh, I think it would be completely different. It was completely different. Right. Um, so, um, grateful to. You're bringing up a very important, a very important thing here about how you know you're not. It, you have to research things on your own and how um, the stereotype or, or the message. See, this is why I love gay pride, but I also have a negative reaction to it because to me it's almost like St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is supposed to be a day of celebration of religion. Has become a day of alcoholism. Absolutely, you know, people don't people don't understand. I mean, if you ask them what the capital of Ireland is, half of them will say Guinness. So mm -hmm. my thing is, for gay pride, if you are in a relationship, any relationship, gay, straight, whatever, undecided, you know, um, it's not about celebrating that day. And, you know, life mm -hmm. doesn't happen on gay pride. Life happens on a Tuesday. Be there mm -hmm. for me on Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Hold me in your arms on Sunday morning. You know, yeah. I, celebrating that day, it's almost like having a spouse or a partner and, uh, you know, celebrating her birthday or celebrating your anniversary. And mm -hmm. for the rest of the year, you ignore her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we parading around. I understand that, you know, it's happiness and people take go overboard and they parade around half naked and they do this. But that's exactly why a lot of people still have a bad reaction about us because they think that's how we live. I, I, I feel it looks very interesting. I wish that really were the case. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just sort of an old soul. I'm, uh, you know, I'm very romantic. I'm very old school, you know, and I, I like feeling that chivalry, you know, in a relationship. I like feeling that sense of, you know, you know that I'm going to protect you feeling. Right. So, you know, when you see somebody parading around and all these you know, rainbow feathers and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, that is so not what it's about. That's not what we 
do. Yeah, it's I I I I, uh, I hear what you're saying because uh, you know I want everybody to do whatever they want to do. I am so liberal; it's crazy. Um, but I I wonder about that, and not so much in terms of people accepting us because I'm not looking for people's acceptance. Um, I am who I am, and I just want my civil rights. And if you if you don't accept me, that's fine with me. But I do wonder. So on one day we a lot of us. Uh, where you know sc- are scantily clad and, and and jumping around like you said with the uh, St. Patrick's Day parade, it has become a day of okay, let's get drunk and throw up on the street. Um, not really what I'm there to celebrate, that's for sure. Uh, so I hear what you're saying. But do you feel it's, like it turned out to be something very uh, disrespectful? Right. <laughs> How did it something... start? What what was the original <clears throat> intent of the month of or of the parade of the? Well, the first original gay pride, I mean, we're not even taught now it's become a whole city. They have to shut down Fifth Avenue. Right. But the very, very first gay pride, how many people were there? They, were, they, they have a historic picture. It was very, I mean, you, I think you can count them on one, one hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, it was, it was just a small group of people and decided to start marching. But of course, naturally, as the years went by, everything started to get, and I would say, progressively worse. Because the original message, I understand that they couldn't, uh, you know, for a small group of people that wanted to start, you know, gay pride, they really didn't have much of a voice because there weren't that many. But now it comes to the point where you need, you know, the NYPD, where you need security because people go crazy, you know. Um, it's, it's almost like the same thing when, um, you know, when it's the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Right. You know, it's all, it's all, it's all chaos in the city. I or even, that... for, you know, or even SantaCon. For God's sake, Santa Con has Mermaid, become now right. Mermaid Day. Yeah, Mermaid yeah. Day is another Yeah, and that's why they've rerouted it this year, and they've actually shortened it because it has become um, it's become huge. It's the largest, uh, one of the largest. I shouldn't uh, speak statistics that I can't prove, uh, but it's one of the largest parades in the city, and so this year they've rerouted it, and they've shortened it because it's just become this thing that the city can't manage anymore. The Dyke March, uh, the Dyke March too. That's also become something that at first, I mean, it was something which, which I... What know, is that? Also, the Dyke March? Yeah. Exactly that. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know there was one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, this, this, is also, this also happens during the month of uh, Gay Pride. I, I, I don't awesome. want to say which date it is because I'm all, I always get confused because right now there are, you know, there are right. in fact many. And each weekend um, is dedicated. For example, Queen's Pride happened the first, uh, the first Sunday of June. It passed. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, so every, I, I don't know when Brooklyn Pride, it's every, I mean, chances are there is something going on this weekend again. Mm-hmm. And I think Great. it's wonderful because it does allow people from every borough to kind of just go out and, and meet people. But, you know, um, the thing is, for example, when you say gay bar, usually it's implied that it's for men. Mm-hmm. You know, which is, uh, this is one thing when I, when I talk to people and I say, I really do think that they should expand more lesbian bars. And it's not because of the fact that, uh, you know, there's anything wrong with, you know, having drinks with the boys sometimes, but it's just that if you're a single woman and you want to, you know, mingle with other single women, um, I think that you do have to have that difference, you know, and you do have to have something that is a place that you could call your own. But, you know, my old school romanticism says to me in the back of my head, you're never going to meet somebody nice at a bar, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wait, after Farrah. Years, everybody looks gorgeous. Farrah, but I want to ask you, <laughs> I, I got to ask you really quickly, and, I, and I, just to keep it a little bit in the love pocket, what is your ideal mate? Um, Describe your ideal mate. Um, someone, someone who understands that no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am, I'm happiest when I'm with her. Mm-hmm. Someone who never has a doubt in their mind that, oh, just because uh, I had to go to a casting call or just because I had to deal with X hundreds amount of people during the day, that those people mean more to me than she does. I just need her to understand that, you know, she's home wherever I am. And when I find her, no matter where she is, even if it's at the bus stop, I'm already home. I wish that I could find somebody that, that understands that. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a universal want. Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. that's certainly Definitely. what I strive for, and what what Bob and I talk about um, as we come and go and move around. Um, one one question that kind of goes along with what we're talking about is how do you 
uh, think, how do you feel about having legalized marriage? Has that changed the nature of relationships? Are are there, I'm not even quite sure where I'm going with this, uh, uh, legalizing marriage give, puts it right in the mainstream of of marriage, right? Of marriage, mm-hmm. of this of relationships. relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you know, to not use any different, it legalizes, it legitimizes uh, the relationship sets up. I know there were contracts before marriage was legalized, but this puts it right in, in the books, if mm-hmm. you will. How, how has that changed the climate? What do you think, Greg? Um, I think it has changed it. I think it's, uh, again, there's an example you know, uh, if that's something that you're looking for, then you know that it's possible. Right. I think especially um, for me, I have uh, several friends who have been together for years and obviously could not uh, legally get married until 2015. And that changed everything. You know, uh, if you're at that yeah. ceremony, hearing those words. Um, also, as you get older, you know, you have full rights um, you are connected. I mean, I can give you so important. Exa- yes. It is important. I, no I, matter what you think about marriage, right. you know, and believe me, uh, I have some issues uh, <laughs> about the institution. Mm. But if you get it, then I get it, too. Yeah. And I think that changes things. And I think it makes I think it makes goals more positive. I think it gives uh, young kids hope. And they're the ones who who I think really need it. So that they know that as they're getting, going through life, um, there's, they, they don't have to live a marginalized life. Mm-hmm. Love it. That's great. Um, it so can I, go, go it can go either way. <laughs> basically, to me, see, because I'm a very private person, and I believe, and I've seen, you know, some people can agree with my theory or disagree because I understand there are people that really want um, the 200 guests. And they want a huge way. And that's, I'm not saying that that, because if you really look at some ceremonies, they're breathtaking. But I just have a feeling that if, let's say, for example, you are very much in love and you and your partner want to really just, you know, put a ring on it and seal the deal and do all that stuff, Mm -hmm. I think that the marriage has a stronger chance of lasting when there are less people involved. Like, for example, if you, let's say you have a best friend or you have a good colleague or something and you say, you know, we're going to do, uh, I, lately I've been hearing so much about those uh, uh, wedding moons, they call them, you know, destination wedding. That, for example, you go on a cruise ship with some friends, mm-hmm. you do it on the cruise ship, and your destination, that's your honeymoon. And mm-hmm. you just party, party that week away and quietly, you know, mm-hmm. and have a nice quiet ceremony. That marriage will be forever. But the bigger the bash, you know, the more expensive the wedding invitations, that is due to failure. It's almost like anything, you know, if you... Do something quietly if you do. Like they say, never never let them know your next move. Some people, for example, uh, people to this day wonder if Enrique Iglesias is married or not. They don't know, you know, because he's been with Anna for years. And uh, I remember in one interview when they were asking him something, they said, you know, so are you planning on, you know, on getting married one day? And he says, well, who knows what the future holds or held already. And he starts laughing. You know, because, uh, you know, and he's how many years has he been with her? And he right. just had these gorgeous twins, you know. So I'm just, he's a very private person. But that the marriages and big weddings, uh, that that's across the board. Again, uh, you know, no matter who you're marrying, um, but the getting married, having a marriage, that's about the promise. So the celebration is the celebration. Um, but I think it's it's the promise, that comes oh, yeah, with well, standing up and taking those vows. Now, Bob and I have been married about a year and a half, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. we were both, as our listeners know, we were both widowed. And I got flack. I was, Why, what are you doing that for? Why do you have to do that? And and that's how I thought about it. No, it, it's a promise. It's a commitment that yeah. we want to make. It doesn't minimize our our the spouses that we lost. You know, we honor them. We include them. Sometimes we say it's the four of us. <laughs> I think they're they're wherever they are, laughing their asses off at us, going, "Wait for it. She's going to do that any se- ah, You fell for it. Um, so, you know, we're here. So that's what we did. But it is definitely about the promise. And and I am a, obviously a believer 
in in marriage. Yeah. But it's hard work. It, oh, you know, yes, marriage isn't the wedding. The, yeah. the work never stops. You know, I, love I that. remember years ago, my father. Um, yeah, I, I just lost my dad recently. I'm and, so sorry. Uh, my, yeah, sorry. You know, it's it's been a very rough start to the summer, you know. But um, one thing I one thing that I want to mention about him was that uh, he was a superintendent in an old building where we used to live. Uh, and this is back I'm talking early '80s. You know, uh, there was a couple. Um, uh, well, you know, one was a U.S. citizen, and he, his partner was from Mexico. And they were together for I think over 20 years. Uh, they built a beautiful home in Mexico. And uh, he was very fond. I mean, he was. The, those were his friends. You know, every time they had a birthday, an anniversary, something. You know, my son. We were always included. You know, in the dinner. Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, his partner, uh, that was from Mexico, passed away. Mm-hmm. And um, this loving family that accepted him and accepted the relationship. You know, all of a sudden, well, who are you? You know, uh, yes. this, uh, you know, this house isn't yours. This is the family house. Yeah. This isn't, you know, all of a sudden, you know, this family that he thought belonged to him became strangers because, uh, you know, they're just basically saying, you're not legally tied to our son. Mm-hmm. So who are you again? And it was the most disgusting display of greed that I ever saw. It was disrespectful to their own son's memory. You know, and uh, basically married couples in this case do have privileges that non-married couples, and if, if you're not married, that's not to say that you can't leave something in a will and testament stating, you know, I'm leaving this to my partner. But when you are married, it's almost like you're grandfathered into that promise. Mm-hmm. Right, yes. You know, so basically, like it or not, married couples do have far more security than, for example, uh, say, a partner would. And it's not fair, because you can have a marriage that lasts a year. Mm-hmm. And if something happens during that time, no matter what or how the relationship was, immediately everything goes to the spouse. Or you can have a relationship of 30 years, and they never married, and it was the purest love that you've ever seen. Right. So, right. You know, so in that sense, I do believe, yes, you know, not just not just because, of, you know, to protect yourself, but I do believe that aside from the romantic aspect of it, you know, there are things in life that, such as death, such as accident, and then, you know, it's, it's horrible when all of a sudden, People that you saw and admired you, liked you, they treat you like a complete stranger. You know, the number one question, well, who are you? You're just the boyfriend. You're just the girlfriend. You know, this, I'm the mother, I'm the father, or I'm the brother. You know, all of a sudden, they, no matter what you went through with this person, you're not anybody. Well, so, we, um, we could do a whole episode yes, on that one. Yes, Honestly, we can. thank you. And, I'm going to thank and, you in advance because that's going to be an episode. Yes, yeah. uh, but you understand what, what my point is. I do. Is, I, right? Absolutely. Like, you know, and this is unfortunately something that many, many, many couples go through. So, um, uh, you know, yes, it's beautiful to say those vows in front of your friends, in front of God, you know, and then go on that wonderful honeymoon. But also, couples that build a house together, that build a life together, really right. need to, you know, re- have to stop and think and say. If something were to happen to me, would the love of my life be protected? Right. Hmm. I have. Yeah. Um, I have an. I have a question that Bob had. Oh. Okay. Uh, he want. He suggested asking, or he said, "Well, I would want to know the biggest misconception about gay couples." About. Great question. Thanks, Bob. So, um, what, think, what do you think? I think the. In, uh, the biggest misconception would be some stereotype. Um, like? Well, you know, that all lesbian couples go on one date and then the U-Haul is there the next day. Or <laughs> that all male... There are some like that, though. There are. There's, there's some like everything. Well, stereotypes come from <laughs> exactly. somewhere. Um, or that all male gay couples um, are uh, constantly hunting for sex and they don't, they're not monogamous. Uh, or that they're, you know, partiers. And there are some that are, and there are some that aren't. Um, okay. So I would think that would be the, you know, just off the top of my head, the biggest misconception. Because, again, I go back to um, your original comment or premise that people are people and relationships are a challenge. And I don't know that it has anything to do with who you're uh, in love with. Those challenges are still there uh, all the time. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what others think of that. But that's that would be my to answer Bob's question, um, you know, I think that's a I think that's a really big misconception of thinking that these old stereotypes um, from 
other times still carry over to this day. Mm-hmm. You know, I know I, I have a, a couple, uh, two men who've been together since we were all in college, and they're as much like any heterosexual couple that had been married for almost, you know, 30, 35 years. Mm-hmm. There's nothing about them um, that you would say, you know, would fit into that stereotype. So, yeah, there's all kinds. Of, so that, you know. Farah, what do you think? I don't know. I can't, I, especially as I can't stand phrases like when people find out that you're gay, but you're so beautiful. Gay mm. women are not ugly. <laughs> really? You know what I mean? That's the number. That's the number one mm-hmm. thing that people were saying if they see a very femme girl. But I can especially with with in in um, with lesbian relationships. The problem is that stereo, stereotype. If you see a woman that has short hair, she's taller, she's bigger. You know, automatically people think she's the man. Right. You know, um, it is so not the case. I can tell you an example where one time I had gone to. It was a few years back. I had gone to a mixer. I was invited, um, you know, by by the host to make an appearance there, and just you know, it was a, a, a wonderful mixer. I, I used to go uh, about once a month, and the thing is, uh, I was introduced to she was she was probably I don't know uh, maybe about five four by five, you know, at average height, you know, for a woman especially, mm-hmm. and I'm towering over her, and uh, I smiled and I said hi, good evening, you know, and I when I shake people's hands, I do it very delicately, you know, because I think that I, it's just my nature. This woman iron gripped my hand to the <laughs> point where, you know how when people grip your hand, you feel your bones starting to crack? <laughs> yeah. And I just say, I was like, Jesus, it's not made of iron, you know? And then, and then for the rest of the evening, she proceeded to drink heavily and was chasing me around the whole venue so that she could try it again. And I said, did you not break the bones the first time? Cool. You know, they just feel like, I don't know, that, you know, because you're of a certain height or something, you know, you, you're ready to kill dinner. And I'm just like, that is so not the case because. I've found it's kind of like um, when you look, when you see very big dogs, like you look at a husky or a German Shepherd. Those are the you know those are the dogs that will curl up on your lap. They're bigger than you right. are, but they'll yes. curl up on your lap and they're like like puppies. You yes. take a Chihuahua and it'll bite your head off. True. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, this is the same thing. You know, it, with women especially, I have found that the smaller they are, the more aggressive they are. You know, and the bigger they are. It's, it's actually like a puppy syndrome type of thing. So I tell people, please don't fear me. You know, yeah. quite the contrary. Mm-hmm. And, and that's very similar to what many people say about short men and tall men, mm-hmm. straight men. Right. That, yeah, you know. The Napoleon but, complex. The Napoleon right. complex, sure. exactly. Okay. I got to ask this, and I, I'm going to try to figure out how to ask this, but since I have both of you here, um, one thing I've always admired, and I made this up, so I want to get some truths about this from both of you. What's so cool about some of the the gay culture is they can meet at a bar. If they choose to, they can hook up and still be together 20 years. Whereas, and this is just my story, straight people, nine times out of 10, if you meet them that night and you hook up, while there are a few exceptions, I feel like there's this judgment on women like, oh, well, I can't be with her because if she hooked up with me, who else would she hook up with? Mm-hmm. And one thing I've always admired about my friends in the gay community, some of who have been fairly promiscuous, but yet great lovers and been in great relationships, I'm like, wow, like, wouldn't that be great if women decided to, and, and not saying that that's not really our nature, but if a woman wanted to hook up with a guy that night and the stigma wasn't there, like, oh, well, she must be a tramp or a whore. And I've always admired that about the gay community. And I'm not saying the whole, but a lot of my friends, mm-hmm. I was in Rand, um, I have family members that are gay, that they're, it's all the same, but I've always been like, dang, if somebody wants to step up and get intimate with somebody that night in a straight community, there's a whole stigma about who that woman is and what did she do with herself. So is there some validity to that? Because I've been walking around holding that. And again, I'm not saying that every single person who's gay, as you said, Greg, early, hooks up right away or is promiscuous. Right. So... Uh, share your thoughts on that, please. Fair, you want to take that? <laughs> uh, I, I think um, in this case, regarding the, uh, the, the, because nowadays, unfortunately, as much as it would be very hard to disagree with what you just said, this whole hookup culture, unfortunately, now is also very much. You see, I think, I, and I, I, you know, I could be wrong if I'm saying it like this, but I think one of the reasons why, um, in gay relationships, you will find people that are together longer, and I'm not saying that this is in, in, in every relationship, but in most, 
I think it's also because of the fact that um, I find that the gay community values relationships a lot more than straight people. Now, I know a lot of people are going to start throwing rocks at me for saying that, but it's just that you have to understand, there was a time when straight couples could get married, divorce, and remarried within a course of 48 hours. And for two women to be living together and not call the other one their roommate, or for two men to be living together and not saying, oh, he's my cousin and he's just staying with me. You know, it's, uh, it, we, we had to do a lot of hiding for a very long time. So then I think that because of the fact that in straight relationships, you know, it can be put together just as easily as it was broken, uh, people take it for granted. And the hookup culture today, because of social media, because of, you know, digital love, because of, you know, all of these, you know, disgusting, you know, pictures that are sent, you know, via text and everything, it ha it's becoming that. And I think that people are very rapidly losing the value of what, you know, what it's like to be in a relationship. Because they're like, oh, it's okay. If I'm, if I'm lonely, I'll just hook up with someone. And that's not what life is about. Because, you know, today you're healthy. Tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen to you. And is, is this what you want? You want to be surrounded in a room full of strangers? Mm, got so, it. You know, so unfortunately, I think that, um, yes, you know, I understand what your original goals may be. But I think that if, uh, in the gay community especially, you'll hear, oh, that we've been together for 40 years. Oh, we've been together for 20 years. Um, it's because of the fact that when something is hard to achieve, you value it more, you appreciate it more. And um, it's it's so easy for a man to call a woman, you know, his girlfriend. But it's worse for a woman to call someone, you know, she's my girlfriend. So being able to, to say that and then all of a sudden, you know, have that and, and turn that love into some, a household and, and into a relation, it's very rare. So I think I think the you know the gay community does value it more, but we are losing that due to, as I mentioned, due to all the digital crap that's going on. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. think also that men are socialized to have sex whenever they want, as much as they want, and you know that's a point right. of pride. You know, you go get yours, and we're all happy about that. And women still, unfortunately, are socialized that if you have an active sexual life. There's something wrong with you. That's um, very true, and that's and it's centuries. Sad. That is centuries of sure. societies doing when going back to when and you had to be a virgin and you had to be pure and yet and well, you and were, it's keeping you your doing, and keeping it's keeping your, your thumb on a part of the population, which is exactly. what this you know, which is what all civil rights are about. Exactly, you know. And yeah. if I can keep, you know, we don't want these women out there doing what they want to do, so we better tell them this is how they need to behave. And if yeah. they don't, then we will stigmatize them as whatever. And again, men are a less. So to answer your question, Brees, maybe, um, is it easier for men? You know, I can't speak to all of them. Yeah, I guess because there is a quality of men can do whatever they want when right. it comes to sex and women still are treated as less than if they uh, have an active sexual life. Yeah. And I I'm, I'm going to leave you with uh, one yeah. thought, if I may, before yeah, I go. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, this is probably going to be for our next segment. You know, this one might make you laugh. Okay. You know, we, we, say, we say that we think, you know, that, uh, you know, we're everybody's gender neutral and we're all accepting and this and that. But I promise you, the example that I constantly see is if, for example, a man meets a woman and she says to him that for the past eight years or for the past ten years of her life, she was in a relationship with two women. You know, she hadn't been with a man or something, and she just broke up with her girlfriend and whatever. Uh, I promise you, he would not have a problem with wanting to become this woman's boyfriend. You know, and, and it's kind of say, well, uh, I'm going to show you what it's like to be loved by a man. But I do promise you that if a woman meets a man and he says he's been in a relationship with four men for the past 15 years or something like that, she will have a negative reaction to that. Got Immediately, it. she's going to start thinking illnesses, oh, STDs, or, you know, what can, you know, or he goes, he'll be with me and he'll leave me for a man. That was the first one I would have thought of, and because I'm agreeing with your, yeah. your first statement that if a, a woman told a man she had been with another woman, he'd be like, all over it. Yeah. Uh, really? <laughs> Let's try uh, that. Absolutely. Like, really? Okay. Let's try that. It's and, our anniversary. And yet, if a man told a woman... Uh, yes. Uh, my first thought was, oh, he, he would leave her. 
he would yeah. he would leave no, her. No, but especially the first part, for example, if the woman says to the guy, you know, I've been, for the past 10 years, I've been in a relationship with three men, or if, even better, if she says for the past 10 years, she's been, she just broke up with her girlfriend of 10 years. I mean, he would, if anything, he would think it's a wonderful thing to be with a woman that's, that's had this because she's more in touch with her emotions. She's very sensitive, you know, and she's pretty much maybe knows what even. she wants. And just like you said, but he'd be all over her because yeah, he'd be like, oh, absolutely. wow, you know. Oh, yeah. But uh, but women do not think that she wouldn't say, oh, well, he's secure in his own skin because, you know, right. he's been with women. Now he's on it. And on that note. Uh, I know you're going to jump. You're going to jump. And we've actually wait, run over. Wait. But before we go, I just want to say one thing or contribute one thing. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, we really appreciate both of you extending your time on this episode. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Wikipedia, Gay Pride. Gay pride or LGBT pride is the positive stance against discrimination and violence towards lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people to promote their self-affirmation, dignity, equality rights, increase their visibility as a social group, build community, and celebrate sexual diversity and gender variance. That is the definition of gay pride, according to Wikipedia, and I think that is pretty fabulous. Um, yeah. So. 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 Proud every day is one of my. Proud every day. Proud every day. Mm-hmm. Like every that. day. Yes. Be there every day. Yeah. There every day. Not just for gay pride. Exactly. Not just for St. Patrick's yes. Day. Not just for. Be, love your partner every day. Not just on Valentine's Day. Love yes. yourself every that's, day. Yes. Exactly. Love. Yes. That's even better. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you guys. Thanks Thank so you, much. Sarah. Okay. Talk Thank to you guys soon. Talk All to right. you soon. Bye. Have a great Bye-bye. Have a great one. Bye. Greg, thank you. Yes. You're welcome. My pal there. You're for, welcome. Uh, it's great to see you. Down. Yes. And, and great time. to meet you, Breeze. Yeah, and thank yes. you for coming in and thank you for sharing. And I appreciate your contribution to thank this you. podcast it's and great. sharing it your was life. Fun. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. We'll have to do round two or three and bring your partner exactly. in. Exactly. Exactly. Think we can get Liam on? Uh, probably. And All he right. talks better than I do. So. Oh, yeah. oh you are perfect. You're fabulous. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, we're it's good. great fun. Okay. Well, so till next time. Till next time. So the ladies. <laughs> Married women. We'll see you on. soon. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Let us know. See you in the soon. comments below. Bye.